was heartened to, to see how many people uh, came by, uh, walked, public transport, or cycled. I don't know. Uh, I cycled this morning. I don't know uh, how many people did that this morning, just as a show of hands. Have you dried out yet? I mean, I just got soaked, absolutely soaked. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, canter through this um, very quickly. Uh, uh, as Andrew said, uh, I actually head up the urban design uh, team in, in Transport for London. Uh, and this is what we're about. We're, we're trying to sort of embed uh, good design uh, thinking into all the projects and init initiatives that... Uh, Transport for London are involved with, uh, both within the organisation, across it, in the different businesses of that organisation uh, and outside as well. So that's just uh, uh, a bit of background. Um, this uh, is an interesting document, and, and really it's, it's the context for uh, me talking to you today. Uh, bigger is uh, and better. It, it's basically the, uh, the first, I was worried when you say the first, but it's the first sort of... Uh, comprehensive infrastructure plan running up to 2050. Uh, so um, it's got a, a number of aims uh, which are based, I'm going to refer to this very, very quickly, uh, ensuring a global success, housing uh, a growing London, which is about uh, obviously London's growing economic uh, growth and, and, and its population growth, uh, Better Not Bigger is about the quality of life and really uh, innovating for transport about how we've got to keep up with uh, technology. Uh, and that's quite an important, important document, of course, for the, for the Mayor and for Transport for London. Um, London is, uh, uh, according to this document, and this is Site Selection magazine, so it must be good, um, this, uh, London is the most competitive uh, world city at the moment, uh, uh, above those others that you see uh, listed there. Uh, and this part of this competitive, competitiveness is, is, is about this sort of uh, distribution of uh, this sort of density, massive density and distribution uh, of employment there. And you can see huge, huge spike uh, around, um, uh, of course, the city and uh, uh, the centre of London, uh, generally, so uh, that's all sort of fed by uh, radial transport routes, bringing people into uh, and out of the city. Uh, so it's competitive. It's it, it sort of uh, it's in, in terms of the global economies, um, it ranks alongside Paris, uh, New York, uh, and and Tokyo there, and of course. Uh, the emerging uh, sort of powerhouse uh, of global economies, uh, Shanghai uh, and China. Uh, population growth, which is what uh, is pretty fundamental, uh, and uh, Angela mentioned, this, is, uh, this is, is pretty key, and we know that the forecast at the moment, uh, we're looking at 8.6 million in London, rising to 10 million uh, by... Uh, uh, 2030, which is uh, a phenomenal, probably uh, amounts to about 100,000 a year if you work out the figures. Uh, that's significantly more growth than uh, New York, for example, which is about 8 million at the moment, but only rising to about 9 million by 2050. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's sort of pretty significant, really. Um, that population growth isn't going to be even uh, by any means, but of course, um, in terms of the number of trips per day, uh, 1.7 trips uh, on average, that's been sort of calculated over the last 40 years, that's going to lead to another 2.5 uh, million trips in London by 2030, which, is, uh, which is, is fairly significant and needs to be planned for. Uh, so Transport for London, uh, not surprisingly, is going to invest, and that document that I, uh, I showed you earlier uh, sort of sets out the areas where you need to, uh, to, to plan that investment. In terms of supporting the economy, um, with the things like the Silvertown Tunnel, uh, which is a, a linking Greenwich Peninsula and uh, Newham, uh, we're, we're looking at significant growth there. There's also growth around uh, the expanding housing, accommodating that and linking it. Crossrail to South London Metro, 
um, a, a range of things there. The black line is about uh, innovating transport, um, or the sort of technology which I'll come and talk to you, uh, talk to you about in a, in a bit, um, uh, and also improving the environment. Uh, rail uh, has always been uh, significant, as you can see. Going back to the 50s there, uh, it was a fairly significant proportion of people travelling uh, by, by rail, uh, and that's still the case. Um, you can see uh, buses were, 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 had a pretty big share, but that's, uh, that sort of shrunk significantly in the 90s, uh, uh, but now that's sort of increasing again. And cars uh, and this... Uh, the straw pole in here sort of bears witness to that. The car, the journeys by car are, are reducing, which, is, uh, which is, is sort of good news, really. That rail transport, that uh, ability for people to travel into and out of London uh, on those radial routes has created a sort of a development uh, pattern, uh, which you can see there. Um, and... and in terms of improving that, what uh, TfL is doing is looking at uh, um, is looking at there's Crossrail uh, being built at the moment. Crossrail two uh, is being planned. Uh, TfL is actually setting up a team as we speak about that. So uh, a, a huge amount of improvements in terms of rail uh, coming into and out of London and connecting different connecting those sort of areas of growth uh, in terms of uh, population. But of course. Uh, one of the big problems with London is, is the orbital uh, issue. Um, uh, and London is very, as we saw from that sort of uh, that map of agglomeration, London is incredibly dense in the, in the centre, less dense as you move out, and the, uh, the outer suburbs are, are even less dense still. Um, what the orbital rail can do is start to link those centres in, which has always been an issue, especially where you've got a, a transport system which was based on a, uh, a radial plan. Uh, what this can do is actually link those centres on the outskirts where they are less dense and try and encourage some intensification there. So it's sort of linking town centres. Um, uh, and that's something that's fairly high level at the moment, but it is being uh, explored uh, by TfL. Uh, this is just a map, sort of, uh, so this is just a graph showing how um, basically in the denser areas there was more people walking, uh, car use, although there is car use and it's falling in, in central London, there's more car use uh, in outer London where public, car, public transport can be uh, uneconomic uh, unless uh, it's in a, a, a sort of a connected, a well-connected area. Um, Densification, of course, can be, which, which is going to be increasingly happening in central London. That's where investors want to invest. That can uh, take the form of uh, mixed-use buildings, and we're increasingly seeing those. Uh, the Shard, of course, is a very good example of that uh, and uh, pops up. Uh, if, if, you, if you sort of Google that in terms of the... It's almost like a sort of a small city there. Um, in those outer London areas, uh, the road networks, of course, are incredibly important. And what TfL has been doing in conjunction with the Roads Task Force is looking at how those roads can be uh, improved, what's, what's, the, what's the look of those roads, uh, roads depending on their, their function. Uh, an interesting statistic there, roads and streets, 80% of public space in London, which... Uh, uh, is pretty incredible. But that's sort of looking at movement and, and place, which of course uh, is in, incredibly important. Um, and in terms of trying to move traffic around central London, where uh, it, it's increasingly difficult, what TfL has also been looking at is uh, tolled uh, tunnels uh, for the in, in a ring. Now, this might sound like fantasy, um, but it has been done... Um, it's been done certainly in uh, other cities, and one that I was lucky enough to go and have a look at a couple of weeks ago uh, was Boston, where the, this is uh, the Big Dig, which you probably heard about. Um, uh, and this, I, have, I should have had a before and after, really, shouldn't I, to, to impress me, but this was almost like a sort of a Westway uh, crashing through Boston and separating the, uh, the centre of Boston from the, uh, from the quayside there. That's been put underground, uh, creating this linear park, 
um, uh, very attractive setting which uh, is, is well used in the summer and is, is sort of maturing and developing and uh, uh, obviously allows more space for public realm uh, and, for, and for cycling. Uh, and of course, no presentation would be complete without Boris. Uh, and there he is, uh, cycling, multitasking, really, actually, while he's cycling, which uh, um, maybe he shouldn't be doing. Um, just moving on to technologies, which I, I sort of briefly mentioned earlier, that's really important for TfL. But the important thing, of course, is to invest in the right technologies. Uh, this, that's not a sinking car, it's an amphibious car. Uh, and, and this, 20 years ago, was going to be the way that uh, car movement in London was going to be resolved uh, uh, by, by cars going up and down docks and down the river. But uh, uh, obviously, that, uh, that's, that's really not taken off. Um, but one of the areas which TfL is looking at and which is really interested in um, is autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars. Uh, the benefits of those are... are, are are pretty obvious and extensive, certainly in terms of roads which are, are sort of suffering uh, congestion, and that is early days, but that's uh, certainly being looked at uh, with uh, some, some degree of uh, seriousness. Um, drones, well, we've, we've, we've heard about drones. These are the, uh, the ways that you're going to get your Amazon uh, parcels in the future. Um, uh, so we're led to believe, um, but of course, Drones could have, there could be sort of unwanted effects from drones and, and how you regulate those drones and stop, uh, you know, bombs or, or, or chemical attacks uh, from happening or being facilitated by these uh, is, a, is another question. Um, moving on very quickly, TfL, of course, in terms of what it's doing, uh, has a huge amount of uh, data, real-time data, which... Uh, allows it to monitor and look at its, uh, uh, the, way, the way it's operating. Um, but this data in the future um, is something that we, uh, we're particularly uh, happy to share with people and, and think that, that, that it can be used in a number of sort of innovative ways in terms of uh, apps. Uh, and uh, you might be surprised to know that there are over 200 third-party apps uh, which uh, are about uh, helping people sort of move around and, and get the best out of all this sort of data which is being produced by TfL. But of course, that's with smartphones. Are smartphones new technology? Are they going to be around in 10 years' time? Are we going to be looking at watches or are there going to be chips planted in our brains or on our glasses? Uh, nobody knows at the moment. Um, but one of the things that... Uh, is useful and, and, and is very relevant is um, by 2041, 25%, uh, and I probably won't be around then, but 25% uh, of the London population will be over 65. So personalising those apps for um, the elder generation to, uh, to be able to sort of uh, to, to get around efficiently and effectively, no good saying get on your bike or or go walking, or if you are walking, you know, you can't, you, you might, steps might be a challenge. So it, it's sort of thinking about those sorts of issues and considerations. Um, lastly, uh, just to say, of course, I mean, this is uh, Old Street, for those of you who know it, part of a, uh, a big network of um, better junctions, which TfL is looking at in terms of uh, making improvements, not only to the tube station there, but to the public realm above it, which supports, uh, supports transportation and cycling and walking and all those things that uh, uh, we're, we're promoting and are increasing uh, in terms of their use at the moment. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you.